everybody, this is Nia Filer. I'm here with a weekly astrological message, this time for the 7th until, let's say, the 16th of November 2021. This is where I talk about celestial transits, that celestial soup that affects all of us, all zodiac signs, and how to better cope with it and uh, thrive at these challenging times that we are having above. So let's begin with the 7th, the 8th, the 9th. Basically, up to the evening of the 9th, Eastern uh, European time, it's like a, a breath of fresh air in this intense time that we are having in the heavens. It's an immensely creative time, artistic time, a time that we could exhale, breathe in, and actually refill our batteries a little bit. It's an amazing time for romance. It's an amazing time for sensuality and just enjoying the fact that we are in bodies and we are allowed to enjoy the interactions that we have through our senses and through our bodies with the physical plane. So we're talking about touch and smell and sight and food and drink and love and aesthetics and beauty and all of that. On the one hand, an art and inspiration, the connectiveness to creation, to goddess mother and to nature on the other. Um, so this could be a very fruitful time if you are an artist. This could be a very profound time if you go out to nature and perform a ceremony, especially on the 8th. That's the height of this energy. As the moon conjunct Venus, sextiles Mercury, sextiles Mars and trines. Uranus and it starts with a sex sign to Jupiter so it's really it's really a positive energy coming in that gives us a sense of empowerment however the ninth of the ninth could be a bit obsessive and compulsive step away from your emotions watch them gaze them don't react to them immediately we are having a key square in the sky that is going to affect all of November basically and is affecting us as we talked in the previous video already it is um, a t-square that can we, we could feel on different levels first of all on a personal level this could cause us if we're young people to become more impulsive well at any age more impulsive <sighs> when we come up to the 10th, we're having a T-square in the sky that's going to affect us for the next few weeks and is already affecting us for the last week and a half. It's a T-square between the planet of communication Mercury and Scorpio conjunct Mars, the planet of male energy, squaring Saturn um, in in uh, Aquarius and then opposing Uranus in Taurus. This T-square can affect us on several levels. First of all, on a personal level, we become more impulsive, more independent in our thoughts and communications. It's time to better watch how we communicate, how we interact with other people, especially authority figures. This is a, a time that we can feel that there's great redundance and great uh, th and, and many things that need to change on, on an immediate level and that need to push forward could cause us to actually state things or interact or move forward in ways that maybe in the long run could have been thought over more. It's an especially sensitive time with any kind of authority. So with younger people, these are parents and teachers uh, with all the people, these are still parents and bosses and just generally dealing with the system, with the law, with the fact that we need to abide by a certain set of rules in order to live in a society and that set of rules needs to be updated and changed in a way. Um, we could see hard discussions, not only in our personal lives, but also on the public sphere. In the public sphere this is a time however that we could see breakthroughs that we could see stagnant situations actually move forward after a long time 
The only thing we need to remember along the way is that we need to do that in a way that in retrospective we could be proud of. That we could say even though this was challenging, I'm so proud of the way I chose to react to those challenges. Um, the 11th, so the 10th is when we have this T square in the sky. The 11th is still a very um, uneasy day, you know. It's a very short leashed day, short fused day, um, a feeling that we want to break through from restrictions. And then, as we come to the evening of the 11th, the beginning of the 12th, the sun kicks in with creative more relaxed energy, more romantic energy that says, hey, you can run away from this hectic rat race by just connecting, going inside, meditating, connecting to nature, to goddess, uh, to art, to creativity, just seeing a good movie or a show, you know, or having some romance in your life, enjoying yourself, remembering what is really important for us as human beings here heightening the aesthetic, the beauty, and the contentment we have in our lives. So that's the 12th. And the 13th comes in as an energetic day. It's a great day to push things forward. Mercury is opposed by Uranus. Uranus is at its closest approach to Earth right now. It was opposed by the Sun last week, and now Mercury, plant of communication, opposes it. Indeed, a time for breakthroughs, a time to think outside the box, to so actually get epiphanies, and, 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 and answers to questions that we've been pondering with for a long time or situations that we've been challenged with, with for a long time. But it's not a time that we have a lot of, you know, um, um, tranquility, let's say. It's a very hectic time emotionally and it's a hectic time for your nervous system. And that means that, as I said, we have a very short fuse and there's a great need to move forward enhance your calm. You heard me say that before. 14th, good day, but however, on the 15th, Venus planet of love and relationships is squaring from its uh, uh, station in Capricorn, from its place in Capricorn, Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries. This is definitely a time, you know, and it's what we call in astrology a double approaching trine. That means that it's like two uh, cars coming in for a head collision. It's a square that is very intense, but is short-lived, dispersed very fast afterwards. So the 15 itself is a very sensitive day in how we treat ourselves, our bodies, other people, and our relationship with money and value as well. So we are more sensitive and we are more prone to actually touch the sensitivities of others. So watch it. The sun gives us more energy on the 15th as it squares the great teacher Jupiter and just on the 16th it sextiles the planet of transformation. Pluto giving us a sense of a need for broadening, a sense of ability and inner strength as well. And whew, do we need it? We could say that Venus is already doing its things towards the retrograde cycle that we're going to have in December, but we're going to enter the shadow, the realm of this Venus retrograde in Capricorn already on the 17th of November. That means we're already feeling it. We're going to talk more about that in the next video. Um, however, for readings or courses or private lessons, feel free to contact me at the end of this video. There are all the ways you could contact me and of course for presentations online or in person just let me know this is Nia Feiler wishing us all may we live long and prosper thank you for sharing this and commenting it spreads this to more people bye bye